Today's video, we'll be looking at the G4 iMac. We got 20 minute videos on old technology, computers, laser discs, and some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. Alright, so I'm expecting this to be a relatively short video, probably under 25 or 35 minutes, um, but we'll see. And before we start this review, I think I have a cold or something that's coming on, so if I sound a little weird, or I do, you hear some sniffles during the video, I apologize in advance. So let's start with my usual spiel when I have a Apple product, or a Mac. Um, I was never an Apple guy, definitely not a Mac guy, I was firmly on the PC side of things. In recent times I've grown to appreciate Macs more, but I'm not really a Mac guy. Uh, this machine here would not have been for me. So even though it's pretty cool, I just want to get out of the way, I wouldn't have bought this in the back in the day, and this really isn't for me. I'm more of a traditional tower desktop type guy. I like, I like room to expand. Um, I like functionality over aesthetics, um, function over form for me, generally. Um, so that's just, that's just out of the way. So with out of the way, uh, this thing is pretty cool looking. Um, we'll take a look at it a little bit more from the side. This thing spins around. Um, it's really cool. Even now, uh, many years after this came out, it's still kind of futuristic looking, and it definitely... Uh, would save you some space on your desktop, I think, and it just really again Apple with their you know their whole industrial design is just it's good. Um, and even I, who am not an Apple guy, not a Mac guy, I can still appreciate the style of this. It's very, it still kind of looks futuristic. Um, so let's just go over this real quick. There's a couple different models of the G4 iMac. Uh, I actually don't know which revision this is. Uh, I, I powered it up once when I first got it, and that was many months ago, so uh, I don't remember any of the specs. So that was, this will be a, you'll be coming on that journey with me when we power it up. Hopefully it will power back up. Um, it's just been sitting in storage for months, so we'll see. Uh, I know there was also different screen sizes. I think this is the smallest. I think this is the 15 inch. I believe there was a 17 and maybe a 20 something inch screen, but I believe this is the smallest one. So, I also do not have the mouse that came with it, the keyboard that came with it, uh, or the speakers. So these came with some really nice sort of side speakers. Um, I forget who made them. I think it was, excuse my pronunciation, like Harman, Carmen, or some. I butchered that. I, I don't know it. But they're a pretty prestigious uh, maker of sound products. And they made some really nice speakers for this thing, which I do not have, so we'll just be taking a look at what we do have, which is just the base unit. Uh, as you can see, very simple. Uh, everything fits in this little dome-looking thing. So this is the early 2000s this came out. So 2002, I believe it first came out, and then it was discontinued in 2004. So we're still sporting an optical drive here. I believe it's a DVD drive. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. As for that DVD drive, uh, by the way, it does... I don't know if it works, but it does open when you hit the eject button. Well, it's very nice, a smooth action. Go back in. Yeah. So, uh, let me just turn it around. Um, and we'll take a look at the back. All right, so here I have it turned around, and again, um, this is really neat how, of course they went to a flat screen here as opposed to the G3 iMac, which was a CRT, although they did make a G4 iMacs that also had a CRT, but um, this swivel thing's really cool. Mine could use tightened a little, I think, because it, it, it kind of, it's not doing it now, but sometimes the weight of the, mo it will just kind of drop it down, but it seems to be not doing it now, so I guess it might not need Titan, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You just, you can, you know, spin it around, not, not 360, um, remember this is the back, uh, but it's got pretty good range of motion there, pretty neat. 
All right, we'll start on this side here. Uh, this looks like a, a key lock thing. Yeah, this looks like a like a key lock thing. I guess if you can tie it to a desk or something. I'm not. I'll be a hundred percent honest. I I've seen these before. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure how they work. Um, I believe this is for like kind of tethering them to a desk or something along those lines. Uh, next, we have two audio jacks. Uh, there's a headphone one, um, and I believe that's a standard one for headphones. And then we have this other one, and I believe this is for the pro speakers. And if you can see, I think this one's, this one's a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit proprietary. I believe the jack on these um, not only transferred the stereo audio, but also it powered through the jack. So it's kind of a special proprietary thing. Uh, two firewire ports, whoops, two firewire, I believe that's firewire 400. Not very familiar with Firewire, to be honest. Uh, Ethernet port. Uh, power, again, kind of a proprietary form factor, although I have seen that form factor before, um, but still, doesn't make it easy if you lose the cable. Um, here's a modem, still rocking modems. Three USB ports. Um, now, I'm not sure if these are 1.1 or 2.0, because the earliest revision they were 1.1, later revisions they were 2.0, so I'm not sure. And then this is a, a monitor port. Looks like, I don't even know what that's called, but I'm assuming it's kind of Apple, some kind of Apple proprietary or special monitor port to connect an external monitor. It's like Apple Display maybe or something. And then right here we have the power button. All right, so I'm going to plug this thing in and uh, see if it powers up. All right, so I have it plugged in. I have a mouse and keyboard hooked up via USB. So let's power it on and see if we get anything. Okay. That's a good sign. Looks like we've got a power light here. Don't see anything on the monitor yet. There we go. Looks okay. Not very bright, but I could definitely make it out. There's the apple it's spinning. No, um, yeah. Like I said, it's 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 not the best. Um, I definitely can see it a lot brighter in these corners. But again, this is pretty old, uh, 2002 ish. Um, so um, now that the OS is up, and wow, that was actually really fast that the OS came up. Um, that was a lot faster than I thought it would come up. Let's, now we can take a look. All right, so I don't know how well you guys can see that. I know it's at a little bit, a little bit of an angle there. Let me, let me tilt the screen a little bit towards the camera there. Maybe that helps a little bit. But we did load up to Mac OS X. Um, there is some music on here. It was the first thing that popped up, iTunes and music. And there is an internal speaker. Um, it's not that great. It's pretty weak, even with the volume all the way up. It's, it's pretty low. Of course, that's what you'd expect uh, from an internal speaker on something like this. Uh, you'd really be wanting to use external speakers or headphones or something like that. Um, but it is there. Um, here's our desktop. Solitaire Fregato. Um, I like this Mac the Ripper. I guess that's DVD ripping software. But I, I like that Mac the Ripper. <laughs> Um, some burning software. This, I, like I said, I just this was just given to me, so I don't know what's on this thing. Um, I kind of want to know what Frogetto is. Maybe it's a game. I'll check that out in a minute. Let's see about this Mac. Okay, uh, 800 megahertz power PC G4, one megabyte of SD RAM. All right, so doing a quick Google search, it appears the 800 megahertz uh, power PC G4 is the second revision of this. So, the first one appears to have been a 700 megahertz, and there's versions after this that have 1 gigahertz PowerPC G4s, um, and things like DDR, and, you know, just generally better. This, um, this one also, I can confirm now, those USB ports are 1.1. It was only the last revision that had 2.0. So, this isn't the very first G4 uh, iMac, but it's, it's close. It's the second revision. So, uh, one gigabyte of SD RAM, um, as far as I can tell, that is maxed out. So yeah, this is a pretty okay system. Uh, I believe there's a GeForce 2 MX uh, built in. Not, not really the greatest. Uh, later ones, I think, had a, a GeForce 4, um, I believe. So, yeah, I mean, 
eh, I was kind of hoping for either the very first one or the last one. Uh, so, mm, this is kind of like, eh. Um, I'm really probably not going to hold on to this thing anyway. It's just not really my uh, style here. Looks like whoever owned it before me really liked 70s music. Actually, the song that was that popped up uh, when it loaded up, it was, it was Staying Alive. That's what I uh, tested it. I can't, I'm not going to play any of the songs for obvious copyright reasons. Um, but let me see what this Frogetto is. Frog Otto? Right there, you can, maybe you can hear the, the speaker. New Frogetto and Friends. New game. Okay, I have no idea what this is. Kind of reminds me of like, uh, I would say like Terrania, but one of those sort of earlier, kind of like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Can you hop? Can Frog Frogetto hop? It seems like he should be able to hop. It's nice. I mean, I like the art. Space space doesn't hop. But, ah, it's... Oh, look! I got a tongue. There we go. Now, now you're a real frog. Okay. Now we know what that is. Super Tux Cart. I'm not. I'm not gonna play around up with this thing too much. I just want to check a couple things. Uh, quit unexpectedly. Whatever. All right. So, um, not sure what else to really look at. Um, oh yeah, Mac OS 10 version 10.4.11. Um, I guess we will Mac Tracker. What's that? So I guess I'm just going to open this thing up, take a peek inside. I was going to try to upgrade the RAM, uh, but it looks like it's already been upgraded to the Mac, so don't have to do that. Um, so maybe just open it up, maybe put some new thermal paste on it, uh, take a, we'll take a peek at the motherboard and whatnot. Um, that's about it. Uh, what? That's interesting, but I, I mean, isn't that what the internet's for? <laughs> so this has all kind of details on all the different Macs. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Here's the SE30. I have one of these, by the way. I need to do a video on it. I do like the SE30 a lot, for what it is. Um, huh. I mean, it's kind of cool, but sort of pointless with with the World Wide Web, um, unless your internet goes down and you need some specs on Macs, I guess. Uh, okay, so let's uh, turn this thing off and take a look inside of it. So flipping the machine over onto the base here, there's four screws here, 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 and here that you have to unscrew and then sort of gently separate. Um, well, I think this comes off and you have access to put in a Wi-Fi card and some RAM and then after that you there's some more screws and then you have to kind of gently remove it um, anyways this this is uh, too big I believe for these screws so I'm gonna have to get a smaller screwdriver alright so got a smaller screwdriver and uh, unscrew this a little bit tricky you have to pull on the uh, screws this is the second time I've gotten it off. The first time it was a little more difficult, but... Alright, so with that cover off, um, there's a couple things that I guess Apple figured you might want to uh, easily expand. Um, one is RAM, and one is a place to put the airport card, and apparently this machine does have a wireless card installed, uh, which is nice. Um, weirdly enough, maybe not weirdly, uh, it uses that... Uh, what like laptop style uh, size style RAM here now this is 512 megabytes of SD RAM in that laptop style 
which I think is is kind of weird. Um, I know when you take this off and you on the other side where the motherboard is, uh, there's actually a slot on the motherboard that takes sort of your standard form factor, like desktop form factor uh, SD RAM. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, they're the same. It's really just the form factor that's different, but it's, I don't know. I think it's its kind of weird. Um, I guess it might have been a challenge to put another slot on the bottom here. Maybe, maybe they could have put one here or something so you could uh, do all your RAM stuff. But, so yeah, it just, it just makes it a little more complicated if you wanted to max out the RAM because you'd have to get uh, 512 megabytes in two different form factors and then you could up upgrade half of it here and then it but if you wanted to get the full amount one gig you'd have to take this off and pull it out and then you'll see it's just a little bit strange so the other thing is to get this off and get to the other board you've got these four screws but they, they aren't standard it's not flat or Phillips it uses that oh I forget what it's called uh, T15 or Torx or something like that. Thankfully I have this uh, little guy here. It's kind of like a Mac cracker because a lot of Macs use that sort of weird uh, form sort of screws. And this, yeah, this works just fine. So I'll take the rest out and we'll get to the juicy motherboard. Alright, and then uh, here we go with it open here. Um, it's it's a little cramped in there. Um, I'm actually not quite sure how to separate these uh, parts. I don't want to mess anything up, but um, I know here's our CPU and the heat sink is here. And actually the thermal paste goes here and then it make contact here. Kind of like the case is the heat sink. It's kind of weird. Um, here's that other stick of memory I was talking about. But anyways, we have a power connector here. We have a connector here. This actually pops off there, that little, and then this is easy enough. This and these are easy enough to disconnect, and there's, I see a clip, so this one should be pretty easy to disconnect, but then I've got this one that goes under, and I believe that's going to the airport card, unless it disconnects there. That seems a little, tr little bit trickier. Um, but let me see if I can get these separated. All right. Well, I guess we don't have to completely disconnect it. Um, still have that little power thing part uh, to the power jack connected. And uh, I, this cord that I think snakes under and connects to the uh, wireless card. Um, but it's fine. We don't need to do that. So let's just take a quick look at this thing. Um, so right here you can see what I was talking about with the RAM. We have a standard uh, PC-133 uh, SD RAM slot and uh, another 512 megabyte stick. Um, here's that PRAM battery. Probably should replace that. I'm not going to though. Uh, I don't know for sure what's under here but I'm guessing it is the video, the video chip which will be in NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX. Uh, it should have 32 megabytes of RAM. Uh, this is the CPU and uh, here's the heat sink and it goes over and then it connects to um, actually the upper part of the case which acts like a heat sink. Now I've seen in Turtles of the later revisions of this and it actually has two heat pipes. One comes out this way and has another connect point but I guess for the earlier ones like this one with the 800 megahertz power PC G4 it just has the one. Um, not sure what this is. I'm guessing it's the uh, Ethernet chip maybe don't know for sure and then a bunch of other little random chips here we have our connectors um, I think that's should be for the power right here and then here's our IDE and then here's another connector uh, it kind of looks like a floppy connector but it's not and it just connects to the upper part of the case um, right there uh, so right here we have our uh, this one is, it is a DVD ROM uh, drive, CDRW slash DVD ROM drive. And then above that, you might be able to see it, we have a hard drive. Uh, in this one, it's a 60 gigabyte. I believe 60 gigabytes was the standard in this model. And uh, it's just, it's standard ID. I believe it's only 5400 RPM, so it's not the fastest. Uh, you can replace those with an adapter with like an SSD card or just a faster 
more standard uh, IDE hard drive. I think right here is the internal speaker. Not 100% sure. And there should be a fan in there somewhere. I'm not going to take this out. Um, you can fairly easily remove this. Uh, I'm not going to. I don't really see a point. Um, there are other videos where they completely disassemble and actually replace that hard drive with an SSD card, but uh, I don't think it's necessary for this video. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to take this heat sink off. Let's just take a peek at our CPU. <laughs> so, <laughs> I took the um, heat sink pipe off and uh, I put new thermal paste on it and I didn't even think to, to take footage of uh, taking it off or the exposed CPU or anything but we all know what a, a G4 CPU looks like and that's what's under there so um, yeah it looked like it had the original thermal paste on it so I replaced it with some new thermal paste put some new thermal paste here uh, so now it's just putting it back together and then seeing if it will uh, still boot up or did I screw something up we'll find out all right here comes the moment of truth even with my meddling uh, will it power on, or did I screw something up poking around in there? These are the questions we'll answer now, including, if it is screwed up, do I care enough to open it back up and fix it? Hmm, probably not. After all, it's just a G4 iMac. Let's see. Oh, that's good. Good, good sound. Monitor light came on. And, yep, looks like it's booting up. Um, so yeah, that is the G4 iMac, the 800 megahertz power PC version. Uh, well, you kind of know what I think of it. Not really my thing. I wouldn't have bought something like this. Uh, not enough. Really, for me, it comes down to just not enough ability to expand it. Uh, that said, it's a really cool, futuristic kind of space-saving design. Uh, it's a neat design. It, it looks really ahead of its time. Uh, it looks like it would, st it still looks like it would fit into like a sci-fi show or movie. Um, I mean, for the time, not bad speed at all. I, I do like the Power PC, uh, even though, you know, it wasn't really widely supported with games and things um, and just stuff outside of Macs. I do like the CPU itself. So, it's a cool a uh, little Mac, uh, not for me though. Uh, I wouldn't really say it's a great gaming PC either. Uh, if you want to go with a, this kind of era Mac, go with one of the towers. Uh, you probably have a lot better uh, experience as far as gaming goes. But yeah, for just sitting in the corner, internet, doing homework on computer, it, it fits the bill. It, it's it's pretty cool. And of course, the styling, as I've said, it's it's pretty cool. Um, so that's about all I have to, it looks like my dog is cold too. Um, <laughs> so, if you heard him sneezing. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, I don't think it was a very long one, but didn't have much to say about this one. Uh, I've got some other cool videos on the way, so if you like this kind of content, uh, subscribe, ring the little bell. Uh, always welcome to post comments. If you have anything you'd like to say about this machine or memories of it, I'd love to hear them. Uh, again, I might not respond to everything everyone writes in the comments, but I read them all, so please feel free to comment. Love, love viewer comments, and I'll see you in the next video.